Hello, Breakfast Club. We're delighted that you are journeying with us on this adventure through the Bible, looking at the most difficult passages we can find. The kinds of passages most likely to be brought up if you are trying to invite someone to follow Jesus. And I know that many of you do that regularly. We want you to have great confidence that the Bible is not just a book about God, it is a book from God. Next week, we will be looking at the problem of suffering as we wrap up this series, The Bible Says. What? Today's topic is not as likely to be brought up by someone who is outside the faith, but more from someone who is inside the faith. Most of us were probably told the gospel message that God created us, but we rebelled against him. So Jesus came and gave his life in our place, taking all of our sins upon himself and transferring all his good deeds to our account. One day he will return, bringing a new kingdom with all of creation restored. But, but then in your faithful reading, you read this little gem from Jesus himself. Every sin and blasphemy can be forgiven, except blasphemy against the Holy Spirit which will never be forgiven. Anyone who speaks against the Son of Man can be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven, either in this world or in the world to come. Wait, I thought Jesus' sacrifice on the cross covered all sin. So there's an exception clause now? What if I committed it? Oh, I can't tell you how much anguish this has caused people, but it needs to be put into context. We hope that if you struggle with this verse, that we can offer you some godly assurance today. God doesn't want you to feel insecure in his love. Jesus said these words after he had healed a blind man, and the religious folk says it was because Jesus got his powers to heal from Satan. In other words, they claimed that what was holy and right was evil and demonic. So why blasphemy against the Holy Spirit in particular? While he doesn't get nearly enough attention, in my opinion, we live in the age of the Holy Spirit. He is the one who convicts our hearts, brings truth, and draws people to the Father. In order to become a follower of Jesus, it is because the Holy Spirit spoke to you and convinced you of your need to be rescued. No one will say help until the Spirit gets a hold of them. It is logical then, and this is what Jesus is pointing out, that if you reject the Holy Spirit's advances on your life as evil, as demonic, as unwanted, you will never be forgiven. You cannot be forgiven because you will never repent without the help of the Holy Spirit. The rejection of the Spirit is the one thing that causes people to be damned forever. Every other sin we commit is covered, but the rejection of his free gift, our willful resistance to his plan for our lives, spoken to us by the Spirit, leaves us sadly lost, condemned, and alone. There is a great irony with the unforgivable sin. Do you know what that irony is? The irony is that if you care about blasphemy of the Holy Spirit, you are least likely to have committed it. You care because you fear God. You know he doesn't lie. You know he means business. On the other hand, those who don't care, those who have convinced themselves that God cannot be trusted, will be the most likely to willfully and intentionally resist the work of the Holy Spirit in their lives. They are most likely to point to mistakes by the church or difficult passages in the Bible or Christians who have hurt them or the problem of evil as reasons to reject Jesus. It is all just a smokescreen, though because they just don't want to agree with the Holy Spirit that they are sinners in need of rescue. They will call what is evil good and call the work of the Holy Spirit evil. This is blasphemy. This is unforgivable. May you be assured, Breakfast Club, that God does love you, that he wants you with him forever, and that your sin is far worse than you can imagine, but his love is greater 
than you could ever dream. May you fall into his loving and gracious arms, finding freedom from your sin today, having been convinced by the Spirit that it is all true. Amen. All right, there you go. We are going to spend a whole week next week on suffering and the problem of evil, which is something that you will probably find yourself having to face either yourself or working with someone or alongside someone who has to deal with that as well. So it is worth our time next week to look at all the sources of light within suffering. And I'll see you then as we wrap up this series. The Bible says what? See you then.